Hey everybody, welcome back to Rust Admin Academy. I hope you're having a wonderful day. As I'm quite often perusing the UMod website, looking for new plugins to cover for new videos, I'll sometimes stumble across something that I think you guys might like. This isn't a plugin that anybody has asked for in the past, but I know that there's people out there that will enjoy this plugin. Now, as many of you might already know, I cannot stand PVE. In my opinion, PVE is not a part of Rust. You need to have risk or you've given up a large component of what makes Rust so much fun. Now, that all being said, what if we we could provide just a little bit of protection so that when players first join a server they have an opportunity to get set up get a base built start getting their inventory built up without the risk of being raided and no believe it or not i'm not talking about any type of raid protection plugin or anything like that the plugin that i'm talking about today is actually called headquarters and of course it's available from the umod website link in the video description down below and what headquarters does is it allows our players to dedicate a specific base as their headquarters from which they can work out of without the fear of ever being raided. Careful, there's caveats to that. So here's the plugin. It's called Headquarters. Like I said, it's available from UMod and the developer's name is Digital Iced. So I fully encourage you to go over the documentation. However, it's not a difficult plugin. The concept is really quite simple. And just so that you know right off the bat, there is one single permission and we will have to deal with that once we're in game. And then there's a couple of different chat commands. There's also a couple of different console commands, but all of that stuff is very well documented on the UMod website. So this is the configuration file. It's really quite simple, but we're gonna come back to this after I've actually shown you this plugin in game. So when talking about the permissions for headquarters, it's one simple permission. And all that permission does is it allows whoever has that permission granted to them to be able to run the admin commands for headquarters. All of the other functionalities of the plugin will automatically be granted to the default group. So once your player actually has their base set up and they've decided that they want this to be their headquarters, they simply need to be standing next to their TC and type a simple chat command. So in chat, you'll do slash HQ period start space with the name of whatever you want to call this headquarters. So in my case, I'm just doing hq.start main starter base. Now it says in chat, you've started a protected HQ at this base. You can invite others to join your HQ by having them auth on your TC. And of course, if you want to keep this headquarters secure, you want to make sure that you lock that TC so that people can't randomly come along and authorize themselves on your HQ. So as of right now, my headquarters has 100% raid protection. To check and make sure we can do slash hq.check and it says you're in main starter base is HQ and you have 100% protection. Now, when does that start to change? As soon as you start getting inventory into your base, so you start filling slots in your boxes or whatever, you will gradually start losing raid protection based on how much inventory you have in your base. And by default, you can have 30 inventory slots filled up before you start losing that 100% protection. So if we just go into this box right here and we start dropping inventory in there, I'm gonna actually start filling up another box as well. So now we have these three boxes that are all filled up with inventory and now we can do the same command again hq.check and the plugin tells me that my headquarters now has 32.5 percent raid protection so yes somebody can still come and raid this base but it's going to cost them a lot more in resources even at 32.5 percent protection so i've now gone through and emptied both of these top two boxes now i only have inventory in this bottom box so that's 30 slots right there so if we do hq.check it's going to say that my base protection is at 94 percent so this is going to cost a raider a lot more more resources just to get inside. And of course, you might be wondering, how does another player know if this is a headquarters or not? And if it is a headquarters, how much protection does it have? Well, if we go to the in-game map, anything that is almost 100% protection is going to have a green circle around it, indicating to the players that this is a headquarters and it is basically 100% protected. But if I go back and start filling up these inventory slots with more items, that's going to change my base's protection, of course. HQ.check, I'm down to 59.5% protection. And if we go back and check the map, now that green circle has changed to a yellow color, telling a potential raider that this base has less than 100% protection. So now I've filled up another box. So now I essentially have four boxes basically filled with just random things. These are all inventory slots that are now filled with loot. So now if we do hq.check, we should be down to 10%. Now if we have a look at the map, this has now changed to a dark orange color, indicating to a potential raider that there's almost no base protection left on this headquarters. And there's a good chance that it's probably going to be a valuable raid.
that's the risk that they take. So if you absolutely want to keep your headquarters protected at 100% raid protection, you want to make sure that you have less than 30 slots filled up with loot inside that base. Well, of course, how do we do that? You want to transfer that extra loot over to a secondary base, which is not your headquarters. You can still be authorized on other bases. They just can't be protected like your headquarters is. All right, so now I've transferred some of this loot into my secondary base. Let's head back over to my actual headquarters. We can have a look at the map. You can see that the color changed back to yellow. And of course, if we do HQ check in chat again, our raid protection is now back up to 67%. So it's a really great way to provide new players or after a fresh wipe, a method of being protected while they set up their new base, get started for the wipe without having to worry about being raided every five minutes. Now, I know what everyone's going to be saying. Why would I want to have this on my server where players are just going to be putting all of their expensive loot, their explosives, their ammo and all that stuff inside of their headquarters, which is protected for the entire wipe. And if you're using default settings, as long as they only take up less than 30 slots, they're going to retain that 100% protection. Well, of course, the developer of this plugin actually planned for that. So this period of time where you can potentially have 100% protection is controllable by the plugin. So if we jump in over to the configuration file for headquarters, you're going to see exactly what I'm talking about. This section right here, free for all enabled false. This isn't a default. By default, you'll find that this is actually set to true. And then the next line is we get to define how long after wipe does the free for all mode automatically enable. By default, this is set to 144 minutes, which for those of you that don't have a calculator, that's six days, six full days. So after six full days, free for all mode is automatically going to kick in anyway and then the bases have no protection on them anyways. They're of course still going to be considered headquarters. They're just not going to have that raid protection after the six days. The bottom section of the configuration file is where you get to define how much protection they get. What is the maximum? What is the minimum amount of protection? And then how many slots they can have in their inventory inside the base before they start losing that protection? And then how much in percentage do they lose after those 30 slots are filled up? So by default, that's 1.5% for every slot after the 30 slots. I hope that makes sense. So let's just burn through a couple of the chat commands that are available with this plugin. So of course we can do hq.help. That's going to bring up all of the information about how to actually use this plugin, how to start a headquarters, how to disable protection if you decided you wanted to, how to check how much time is left before the free for all mode automatically kicks in. And of course, hq check, which you've seen me now use a couple of times. So if I do hq.ffa right now, because I have it turned off in my configuration file, obviously it's going to actually tell me that hq free for all is deactivated only an admin can activate it. However, if this was a default configuration file, this would show how much time is left from that six days or 144 minutes, how much time of that is left before a free for all mode automatically kicks in. Now, one thing that I did notice while I was testing this plugin out is I wasn't actually able to use the console commands. So for example, if I just copy that to my clipboard and head over to my console, I should be able to do hq.clear all and it should remove all of the headquarters on my server. However, it seems as though that it doesn't actually do that. So as you can see there, I just did hq.clear all. And strangely enough, it doesn't actually remove that entry from my data file for headquarters. So I'm not sure if that's something that's still being worked on or whatever. I just know that that functionality actually doesn't currently work. But since how we're here, let's go over the data file so that you know what information is actually available. So it tells you the Steam 64 ID of the owner of the headquarters. And if there were other members that were authorized on it, it would display them here as well. What did they name it? How many storage slots they're actually using? The positioning of it and whether it actually has protection right now or not. So because that clear all command isn't actually working right now, if you absolutely had to, you could go into the data file and remove that entry for that one headquarters. Obviously, if you have more players with more headquarters on your server, there's going to be more than just this one entry on here. So of course, be incredibly careful anytime you're deleting anything out of a data file on a live server when it's not a wipe day. So curly brace to curly brace, delete, save, reload the plugin, then whatever entry that was will no longer be a headquarters. So here's some really important information that is on the documentation, but I'm just going to make a point of mentioning it anyways. A player can only belong to one protected HQ at a time. Once a player becomes a member of an HQ, they can't start another one. They can only transfer to another existing HQ. A player can join or switch HQs simply by authorizing on that basis TC, but it may result in them losing that HQ and the building privilege that goes along with it. If there's other members assigned to that HQ, they will automatically inherit 
inherit it. Another important detail is only the owner of the headquarters can actually disable the protection. And once that protection is disabled, it cannot be re-enabled. All right, if you guys have any questions about headquarters, make sure you leave them in the comment section down below. If you like this video, of course, smash that thumbs up for me. And of course, if you like what I'm doing on this channel and haven't already done so, make sure you hit that red subscribe button down below. All right, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. I'll see you guys all next week.